Hello guys and welcome. Today we are making a tier list for Cataclysm Classic. Now it's been a while since the last time we make, made a tier list. And honestly making tier list is really hard because you really need a lot of experience. Which honestly I don't really have. But I wanted to use this opportunity to talk some of the more underrated things that not many people consider. You know people always say that fire mage is god tier and frost mage is d tier right which is probably true but what most people don't consider is that the hardest content in cataclysm classic will be heroic dungeons and pvp and people that only look at damage people that only look at parses are usually the guys who are pretty clueless let's be honest because heroic dungeons were never just about damage, but more importantly, they were about control. And Frost Mage has one of the best control in the game. You have AoE, you have AoE roots, AoE stuns. Uh, you have, you also have a really good burst with lands. Like I don't know why people say Frost Mage is bad because it really isn't. Uh, in my opinion, Frost will be actually so important, especially when it comes to heroic dungeons. Because I really remember, remember running heroic dungeons in TBC and the most important thing was hard crowd control. We always wanted to have a composition where we have, you know, mage for polynomicon, we have, uh, you know, warlock for banishes, right? You need to have at least three hard crowd control uh, guys in your in your five man group. And in a 10 man group, you need even more, right? So... I really feel like Frost, Frost Mage is one of the most underrated specs in the game because your control is just amazing. You have Ring of Frost, probably one of the best abilities in the game, right? You have AoE slows, you have uh, Roots, right? This is what heroic dungeons need. You, you cannot just rely on DPS and high parses to win your game. And what most people don't realize is that high parses are actually not really a good indicator of how well someone plays because parses will never show your ability to adopt uh, how, how much utility you're using uh, how good at you're reacting at the, what's happening right now right uh, there are so many things that stats don't really show yes stats are good average but they can also miss a lot right so let's see you know, Fire Mage still probably has one of the best AoE damage in the game. Um, but it's not like his uh, Fire Mage damage is so much better than everyone else. Like you have Affliction Warlock, you have Moonkins. Like, I don't know why people sp sleep on Moonkins on Balanced Druids. They literally have one of the best AoE in the game. And this will be insane in dungeons, right? So... You know, in my opinion, you see, I always played uh, hybrid classes. I always played hybrid classes. You know, my first character was Night Elf Druid. Uh, my second character was, I think, Night Elf Priest. You know, but y you get to the point when you just wanna, you know, I'm at this stage now that I just wanna play one thing, you know. I don't wanna play hybrid class again, you know. I played Shaman, I played Night Elf, I played Druid, you know. Uh, and I didn't really, you know, like the, you know, uh, stance changing of warriors or druid ever, you know, uh, it felt a bit clunky and uh, it almost feels a bit limiting to what you can do. But there was also like, for example, in Vogue Classic, you had uh, uh, Boomkin Druid. I mean, you, 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 how was it called? Um, Boomkin Tank. So you were literally using, uh, you know, talents from Feral and Boomkin. So the whole plan was to actually, for example, on Druid, you have Torrents to return damage and you have, you know, your mark, okay, two, if, uh, two buffs, okay, but first you apply two heals over time, then you go into bear form to get more HP and then you charge and when you get in, you use Demoralizing Roar and then you change to Boomkin form and then you use Bark Skin for no pushback and then you use Hurricane, right? Hurricane like Thunderclap of a warrior is probably one of the most underrated abilities in the game. Let's check it out, okay? Uh, hurricane ability, Kata. Hurricane 
hurricane. Increase the time between enemy attacks by 20%. Okay. This is very similar to Thunderclap Warrior Cut ability. Now what most people don't realize is that attack speed reduction is literally the best debuff in the whole game. Reducing enemy attack speed is probably the best debuff you can do against any AoE group, even against bosses. I know it says only 20%, but when you actually apply this, this almost feels like you're reducing their attack speed for like 50%. Which means most bosses and most mobs, most of their damage come from basic attacks, from physical attacks. And if you have a warrior, if you have a bunking who can apply this debuff, heroic dungeons will be easy, you know. I know in Cataclysm it's a bit different, you have a lot of these AoE uh, spells that are going off, okay. But still, this is very noticed, noticed to consider. This is probably the sole reason almost why I made this tier list. Just to talk about Thunderclap and just to talk about Hurricane. Because these are two strongest debuffs in the whole game. Reducing enemy attack speed. In PvP games, this is even more insane. In, uh, for example, in Smite, this is also the, mo the best debuff in the whole game. Because when you reduce someone's attack speed, you increase their basic attack speed animation. So not only, for example, not only this affects like, uh, characters like ADC Hunters who use basic attacks, but also gods that use... Um, that animation cancel, that combine abilities and um, uh, basic attacks, like Susano in Smite, right? Because when you inc when you decrease their attack speed, you increase their basic uh, attack basic attack uh, animation time, which is actually huge. Okay, um, probably two two best debuffs in the whole game. That's probably the sole reason why Warrior is one of the best tank in the game, just because of the thunderclap alone. Reduce enemy attack speed. This is the best debuff in the whole game. This is the best debuff in any uh, dungeon situation, any AoE situation, even against bosses. This is probably the best debuff in the whole game. And this is probably the sole reason why I would put uh, Warrior in God tier. Uh, because you have very good debuffs. You have Thunderclap, you have Demoralizing Roar, Demoralizing Shout. Um, even though it lacks some magical defenses, even though now we just have resilience, right, in PvP, uh, you have very good mobility, uh, shockwave, and you have, uh, I think, the blow, you know, you have two stuns, okay? If you play Protection Warrior in PvP in Battlegrounds, don't be the guy who rushes in. You are the guy who actually counters enemy rogues. Every time you see a rogue open up on your carry or your caster, you just stun them. You use shockwave, you use... Uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, let's see, uh, Kata Talents, let's see how exactly it is called. Yes, you have con 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 <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this. Concussion Blow, okay, Concussion Blow. Stuns the opponent for 5 seconds, and then you also have Shockwave, stun the opponent for 4 seconds. Right, you have two of the strongest stuns in the game, and this is insanely good in PvP. And then you can always apply uh, like demoralizing roar, for example. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure if you can still buff demoral. I think demoralizing shout is now 10% uh, physical damage per reduction. You know, it's okay. It's nothing special, but it's still pretty good in in dungeons like. Warriors have best control in dungeons, probably. Yes, DK is probably have one of the best self-healing in the game. Um, their sustain will be amazing, but their control is not that good, right? Even if you see DK in um, PvP, I know uh, Death Knights are probably gonna be insane in PvP, right? Uh, let's see, it's like that, right? Uh, where is this? I know Death Knights will be still pretty insane in PvP and in dungeons, you know, they have good sustain. They have one of the strongest roots slows in the game, but that's always you know you can also you can always counter death knights with a gnome, okay? Actually, the best counter a best death knights is actually dwarf, because you can remove diseases, and most of their attacks are actually diseases. So and dwarf priest, for example, will be very popular in PvP. Dwarf shaman will be very popular, and that's why death knights might not really be. Uh, you know, top tier, right? So we'll see what how the meta will will evolve. 
but these are all very good classes to pick you know maybe if you go pvp you know probably these are a bit lower but let's you know you have to do everything you know so you also you know you also have like paladin uh, how it is called the one that uh, uh, cleanses of slows and roots you know uh, but the dead knight's pressure is pretty huge but they don't really have a lot of mobility right there are quite a few counters against dead knights for example you can play goblin right and if they pull you you can jump out with goblin right or you can use dwarf to remove their diseases or you can uh, use uh, go, uh, gnome to remove their slows you know there are quite a few counters against death knights even though their pressure is still quite insane uh if you don't really have counters then yeah it's gonna be a huge problem so we'll see arcane uh i don't really have enough experience but i heard you know elemental shaman is gonna be pretty insane uh good damage pretty simple rotation uh good good buffs like elemental shaman is good and you don't even need to try hard that's the beauty the, when you get your older you start to appreciate the simplicity you know and elemental shaman is amazing and you have so much like options like this is if i want to be a guilt li guilt leader i would either rule a warrior or a shaman because as a shaman you can always adopt whatever your composition is and as a warrior you're just natural leader natural tank you know so arms warrior where do we put arms warrior one of the problem with arms warrior is it's going to be very popular class right but it's always going to be pretty insane in pvp let's be honest arms warrior they have anti heal they have insane mobility they have really good damage they are tanky once you get to resilience online um they are very good if you have a healer, right? But at the same time, you still have some, you know, some problems. For example, how easy is to kite you, right? Slows, roots. I mean, yes, you have charge, you have heroic leap, right? But you're still gonna be kited. Many classes have slows, many classes have roots, stuns. Best way to actually deal with a warrior is to simply ignore him. That's one of the biggest problems with protection warrior in PvP. They simply ignore you. A good tank, a good warrior needs to take enemy attention. Or you need to counter every time, you know, you have to protect your healers, your carries. Uh, so, you see, arms warrior doesn't really have a lot of... I mean, yes, you have... Let's see what we have. We have charge, we have a heroic leap, we have blade storm. All these abilities are insane, right? But you don't really have good crowd control as an arms warrior do you i mean you have colossus smash one of the best abilities in the game but how can you keep up with your targets that's what i was thinking why not roll goblin warrior arms warrior so you have charge heroic leap and a rocket boots as a movement ability right and what i also want to mention i was actually thinking about rolling a goblin shaman elemental goblin shaman so you can actually you know the biggest problem with shaman is they lack mobility right and they have one of those very fun abilities, for example, if you check Elemental Shaman, uh, let's see, Elemental Shaman. They have Thunderstorm, and Thunderstorm is one of the best knockback in the whole game, right? And what you can actually do is that you use Goblin Rocket Jump ability and then <laughs> knock back somebody. Like, it's, that's insane pressure. What people don't realize is that PvP is all about pressure, right? You have to play aggressively or you will just let other people win. You have to use cooldowns so you get cooldowns back and get more value and value. There is actually a saying, if you don't have ability on cooldown, you're losing value. Right? But imagine you actually, you know, just jump on somebody and use thunderstorm and you knock them back and you start casting and, you know, this shaman can have so much pressure. And one of the biggest weakness of shaman or warlock is the lack of mobility and then you just go goblin, you know. So, 
these are some of the fun things i i cannot really go through everything i just want to talk about some fun things and some things i want to share you know i feel like like if you go pve like all these classes are pre pretty much got here like balance druid is insane aoe ability uh, fire mage insane aoe uh, fire pr protection warrior insane control blood decay insane sustain unholy is probably not really s tier or maybe it is still probably because they have really good damage and such you know frost uh, decay actually have really good control and it's very simple rotation if i would play decay i'll probably play frost you know um but if you're a good player if you if you're a really good player if you like to play also then uh unholy dead knight is probably s tier for you also, I don't know what's the problem with most people thought saying like Rogue is not gonna be good. Like Rogue was always insane class. They have one of the best survivability. They have one of the best crowd control in the whole game. Did you guys even check all the new Rogue abilities? How many good abilities they actually got in Kata? It's insane. They get so many good defense. One of the best defensive abilities in the whole game. And still one of the best crowd control and damage in the whole game. And people say that Rogue sucks. These are the guys who only look at damage parses. They don't understand control. They don't understand how to adopt, how to react. Right? They don't consider none of those things. In heroic dungeons, Rogue will be always good because they have such a good control. And control is everything when it comes to heroic dungeons. You know? Also, good AoE healers. Like, you have shamans. You have resto shamans. You have uh, resto druids. Like, these classes will be all very necessary and insane. Also, people talk shit about Holy Priest, when Holy Priest was, like, always one of the best AoE healer in the whole game, right? I know some people don't like the new mechanics and such of Holy Priest, but Holy Priest, like, you just play Holy Priest in Wrath of the Lich King. Like, their AoE heals are unmatched. Nobody has such good heals as a Holy Priest, right? But you know what really sucks about Holy Priest in Kata? They actually nerfed one of the best abilities in the game, called Blessed Resilience. You know, uh, now it's like whatever, but before, you, when you actually got critical hit, uh, you couldn't get critical hit again for like 10 seconds. So we're really, you were literally crit immune. You literally had one of the best defensive talents in the game. I want to uh, show you this. Um, go talent, uh, TBC. <coughs> this is why Holy Priest in TBC was actually insane. Look at this. Critical hits made against you have 20% chance to prevent you from being critical hit again for 6 seconds. So when you get critical hit, you literally cannot get critical hit again for 6 seconds. This is literally the best PvP talent in the whole game in TBC. And then on top of that, if you go Night Elf Priest, right? If you go Night Elf uh, Priest uh, Elune's Blessing or what was it called? Uh, Night Elf Ratials TBC. Uh, let's see. They literally had. Let me show you something. They had Elune Grace. Reduce the chance you will be hit by melee and range attacks by twenty percent for fifteen seconds. This was literally the strongest spell in the game. 20% uh, reduction to everything, basically. You cannot get hit. It's literally the best possible thing. You cannot get hit. But tw for twenty pr uh, for 15 seconds, for 20%. And they have star shards. That's why Night Elf, uh, Night Elf uh, Priest in TBC was literally the strongest class and uh, race combination in the game. But now they nerfed Blessed Resilience. And they re I think they also nerfed uh, Elune's Grace. So... But you know, Night Elf still now can use Shadow Melt in combat, so you're really strong against casters, you know. And, and you know, dwarves are good, uh, they're good against uh, Death Knights, uh, they're good against Ferals, Warrior Bleeds, um, Gnomes are good against Slows, Goblin are good for mobility, you know. Shaman, Earth Shield will be also pretty insane, and then you just go Dwarf Shaman. Or Goblin, if you want a more mobility, you go Goblin. If you want to counter Death Knights and Ferals and Warriors, you go Dwarf. GG, you know. Mm. 
I, I'm not really sure. I didn't play Rogue myself. I cannot tell you well. I heard, you know, Sap will be always pretty insane. Sap broke, right? Especially in PvP. I also heard he's very good in PvE. I'm not sure about these two classes, honestly. But I, 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 I don't really think they're meh. I think rogues are all really good, right? I think rogues are all really strong. Uh, I just want to put something in lower tiers for more balance, you know? <laughs> uh, let's, let's quicken this up. Survival, one of the best PvE classes in the game, probably. Um, bestial, uh, or what is it? Bestial Hunter, one of the best buffs in the game. You can tame any monster you want, that's so cool, you know? Uh, like it's taming all these exotic monsters. That's one of the coolest thing in the game, right? Um, what else? Let's see. Here, Marksman Hunter, probably insane in PvP, right? Uh, I mean, it's hard to make PvP and PV PV uh, tier list at the same time, you know. Um, but. Marksman Hunter is probably one of the best classes for PvP in the game. It has to be like God tier. It's probably the best range class in the game. You have good mobility, insane burst, you know. Like, I mean, survival is probably good in PvE, right? In PvE, I heard survival is very good. So, you know, let's both put them in God tier, you know, why not? Because Marksman is God in PvP and this one is in PvE. Um, you can reset cooldowns, you have good mobility, you can jump back, you have pet, like, insane damage, you have silences, like, a lot of utility, actually, too. Uh, one of the best DPS in the game without even trying, almost, you know, so. And I heard uh, Beastmaster, Hunter, can bring some of the best buffs in the, debuffs in the game and buffs, so, very underrated class, too. But we have to put somebody lower, you know? Uh, let's see. I don't really understand why people put, put Fury in D tier. Let's be honest, I don't really understand. Honestly, I just want to put somebody lower. <laughs> so we have more, you know, diversity. But like, I mean, this is how it is. Like, I don't really want to overdomplay it. Fury Warrior, once you get gear, always good. Uh, let's check some of the talents. Uh, Kata talents. Blood tears dual wielding. <sighs> That's pretty pretty good. It's pretty similar still, you know. It's probably a PvE spec, you know, honestly. Uh, but one of the best PvS PV specs in the game. There is no way Arms Warrior out damage Fury at later stages, right? Like just look at this, you have attack speed, you have dual wield weapons, raging blow, deal 100% damage with both melee weapons, insane. You have 5% crit, right, for all your party, all, all your rate members, by 5%, that's insane, you know. You have pretty good control, you know, with AoE slows, heroic leap, intercept, you have anti heal, so it's probably not even that bad in PvP, right? Removes any, any immobilization, immobilization effect and refresh the cooldown of intercept. Like if you play uh, Fury Warrior, at the top level you have insane mobility. Imagine Goblin Fury Warrior, you have charge, you have a heroic leap, you have intercept and you have uh, and you have um, a goblin rocket boots so you have four movement abilities and you also have heroic fury to reduce the cooldown and what else do you have uh, you have scrimnisher reduce the cooldown of intercept and heroic lift you know removes uh, and like insane mobility fury has insane mobility you don't have bladestorm but let's not undervalue uh, Fury, you know? 
Pretty insane damage. Instant slams. Right, instant. Fury, he only one who has instant slams. I think. This has instant overpower, whatever. But let's not don't play like. Fury is gonna be probably S tier in later stages in PvE content, so let's not sleep on it, right? I heard Demonic Warlock is very good. Because you have one of the best damage in the game, uh, good buffs, you know, so I haven't played myself, but I watched some videos and people say it's the best uh, Warlock spec, so we'll see, you know, I'm kind of hyped for it. Uh, you have Metamorphosis, you have pets, you have insane control, insane utility, fierce, insane damage, so. What I actually wonder is, Warlock, Destruction Warlock. So you are basically fire mage, <laughs> chaos bolt, uh, increased damage. Like I think destruction is not only good in PvP, but probably also very good in PvE. Let's be honest. I don't even play this pack, and I so I don't know how good it is. Reducing all damage by that spell school by 15%. You have a lot of insta cast, that's shadow burn. Uh, you have uh, soul fire spell to be insta cast, you know, a lot of insta cast. Then you just need good mobility, like you go goblin warlock, destruction warlock, goblin, like it's gonna be pretty insane. Like you have. Insane mobility, a lot of insta casts, you know. Metamorphosis, you know. Warlock is fun. And you have so many talents points, you can literally go like almost two trees, so you know. Maybe if I put this lower, maybe somebody will get inspired <laughs> to play this class, you know. Like, I don't even want to put anybody in lower tiers, but it would make a bit sense, you know. Arcane Mage, I didn't even go through Arcane Mage, I forgot. Right? Let's see Arcane Mage. Arcane Barrage. Insane damage. Yeah, just have insane damage and insane survivability. Increase the... Look at this cool talent. Just check this out. Increase the speed by 70% after 3 seconds after casting and blink. Right? That's so fun. Or you have fire. Where is the fiery boots ability? You know, from what of the Lich King. I wonder, I wonder. Maybe that's just a new improved blink. I don't know. You see the fiery blaze, uh, you know, shoes. That's so, so fun ability on mages. When you get stuck, you get bonus movement speed and immune to roots. Have good buffs. Oh yeah, you have like reduce target movement speed by sixty percent and increase the time between range attacks by sixty percent and increase time. Oh wow, man, increase casting time by thirty percent. Last fifteen seconds. Like this is probably one of the best crowd control in the whole game, man. Jesus. Well, this is whatever, <laughs> you know. You have insta cast, you know, blast wave, deep freeze, you know, mage is gonna be so good, right? So it's really hard for me to put anybody lower, you know, because arcane probably one has one of the best utility in the game. I don't really want to put anybody lower, but I have to, so my tier list looks more diverse on the thumbnail, you know, <laughs> you know, it, uh, I forgot to mention, but you know, uh, tier lists are really good content. Uh, to watch and consume and to make and to talk about. I'm very h hungry now, so please excuse me, okay? I have to put some lower for some diversity, right? This priest is gonna be probably the best healer in PvP, so you can't really put it lower, you know? <laughs> Enchantment, Shaman, good boss, good burst, you know? If you check some of the talents of Enchantment Shaman, 
let's see. Lava leash, dual wielding, you know. And you still have feral spirits which gives you bonus movement speed and all this good stuff, you know. You have attack speed, you know, so. Riptide, Restoration Shaman, one of the best healers in the game. I cannot talk about every class, I'm so hungry. Protection Warrior is gonna, Protection Paladin is gonna be insane, probably. Red, in, Red Tribution, if most people don't really know how to play Retribution Paladin, they don't use all the value their abilities have. But if you know, if you're a good player, if you know how to get value out of all Retribution Paladin abilities, it's probably S tier class, let's be honest, you know. It's probably an S tier class then, you know. I know, I'm, so, I'm sorry, you know. Beast Master Hunter, I'm sorry for putting you so low. <laughs> I have to put somebody here. Honestly, none of these classes is like bad. Because the balance in Cataclysm is... Cataclysm is one of the best, best version of World of Warcraft ever created. So no, not a single class is actually in a bad tier, let's be honest. So let's do it like this, you know. There's no way, Shadow Priest... Shadow Priest was always insane. I mean, you have some problems because you don't have much mobility and you can get kited. But now you have Dispersion, you can play Dwarf to counter Death Knights, you remove their diseases, you can play, you know, so many. You, have, you can play Goblin or, you know, uh, remove slows, like... I mean, Rackful played Sh Shadow Priest. Rackful played Shadow Priest in Arena at the top ranked against the top players. And he was owning. So, of course, it's a god tier, you know? Just like Arms Warrior. And in PvE, he's also pretty insane. You have, you have one of the best utility in the game, even though you have one of the best damage in the game, dude. I'm not sure in PvE, Shadow Priest is probably not like the best top DPS class, like D Demon Warlock or Fire Mage or Balanced Druid, you know, but. Or Elemental Shaman, but in PvP, this pack is insane, man. Like, let's be honest. And I also don't really want to downplay some of these classes, you know. Because let's be honest, they're not like... Discipline Priest might be the best PvP healer in the game. You know, so... Let's go Priest. Discipline Priest, you have Penance. You will never let, let, uh, run out of mana. Power Shield, power shield Barrier. Like you have some of the strongest pain suppression, reduced damage taken by 40% for 8 seconds, penance, like this is one of the strongest abilities in game, so Priest is probably, this Discipline Priest is probably higher, even though in PvE Holy Priest is probably better, you know. Resto Shaman, Resto Druids, like two best healers in the game probably, insane AoE heals, sustain, like, I remember playing Resto Druid in fucking WoW Classic and I only used like 2-3 two, two, abilities and Tornus, 2 heals over time and Tornus on a tank, every, every tank will love you if you play Resto Druid because you give them Tornus, you give them good buffs, Mark, Mark of the Wild and you give them heals over time, so it's insane and you have Healing Rain as a Shaman, like, these are really strong abilities, so I think this is pretty much it, you know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm kind of tired now. I need to eat, okay? But let me know what you guys need. And I hope you like this tier list. Uh, I mean, this is the beauty. You never know which class is going to be fun. Uh, I personally just want to find, find combinations. Like, you can actually play like Draenei Warrior even. So you have 20% heal over time. Plus you get like uh, 2 heal. Let, let's check the talents. If you go Protection Warrior. Arms Warrior. You see, you have Blood Craze self-healing. And you have second with self healing, and then you add in Drenei ability, uh, Gift of the Naru, which heals you 20% of HP over 15 seconds, and you have one of the best self healing in the game. You can run Goblin Warrior, so you have Charge, Intercept, uh, Heroic Clip, and Rocket Boots for mobility. Right, all this combination. You can warf any version of Dwarf, like Dwarf Priest, Dwarf Shaman, is gonna be insane because you counter Death Knights. Ferals, 
and warriors you remove all their diseases their bleeds you know it's gonna be pretty insane so uh, the you know um i'm so tired i can't even think but dwarf priest or dwarf shaman so you can remove uh, all diseases of that night it's probably gonna be insane in pvp you know but just roll what you find like you know i haven't even tried half of the classes properly to you know give you like so, your shadow step like just pretty rock like you have shadow step you know you have killing spree you have his all damage by 20 percent assassination is probably also one of the under most undervalued classes especially also in pve right so i never really played it at the top level but hey i'm hungry now so thank you so much guys and see you in the next one and let me know what you think peace